y'all, Dixie here. Y'all might remember over a year ago, I did a video called Gear Backpackers Ditch First. Well, recently in the last few months or so, somebody left a comment on that video, which got several likes, saying that I should really do a video on gear that never makes it to the trail because people leave it at home. So today, that's what I'm gonna talk about. I asked on Instagram and Facebook what people do generally tend to leave behind and the top 10 items are as follows. The most forgotten item is an eating utensil, spoon, spork, whatever you prefer. I wasn't surprised by this at all and that's actually what I would have guessed because it can be pretty easy to leave that, especially if it ends up outside of your food bag after you get home, if you're washing it or whatever and it never finds its way back in there. It could happen. What was kind of funny to me was the way that people chose to improvise when they left their spoon or spork at home. Some of the things that people used instead were a trowel, Doritos, or some other food item to scoop their food up, a toothbrush, tent stakes, or chopsticks made from sticks found on the trail, a stick itself if somebody didn't have time to whittle, cardboard, tweezers, and a bottle of Tums. I did get a tip from somebody that said their son used rhododendron to create a little spoon or spork or just like a little pokey stick to eat with. And I've heard that you should not burn rhododendron, but apparently eating also from the stick made of rhododendron, it made this person sick. So just a heads up about that. The second most forgotten item was a ladder or fire starter. And Folks tended to just cold soak or borrow somebody else's. And somebody offered a tip on this one also, don't light your stove with somebody else's gas stove. So in case you ever thought about doing that, that's a no-no. Number three on the most forgotten gear items list is fuel. Some people said that they even picked it up on the way to their backpacking starting point and then left it in the car or else it just got left at home altogether. But in this instance, you're not out too much because you could hold a fire or if there's enough fuel for you to borrow somebody else's, you can do that. One fella said he offered his hiking buddy to cook and do the cleaning as long as he could use the fuel that his friend had brought. So that's a pretty good bartering idea. Number four is tent poles. It seems like this could happen if maybe one person's responsibility is the body of the tent and the other one's supposed to grab the tent poles and they just kind of drop the ball on that. It seems like folks were able to improvise in this situation though and either use some sort of cordage or rope to string up the tent, maybe tie it out to some bushes and trees, use branches that they found along the way, or even trekking poles. Number five is tent stakes or hammock stakes, stakes for your shelter. I actually left a set of tent stakes on the Appalachian Trail at one campsite, didn't realize till the next campsite, and I improvised by using sticks that I found on the ground and just use them in place of the stake, but you could also tie out your tent body if you needed to, to bushes, or even maybe put a stick through the loop of the body of your tent and then set a rock on it. There are a lot of ways that you can improvise with this, but it's good to think ahead just in case you do find your stakes left at home. Number six is one that I was surprised really to see so high on the list or <laughs> even on the list at all, and that is a sleeping bag or quilt. A lot of folks say that their trip ended up shortened because they, you know, suffered one night and decided it was time to turn around and go home. Others said they stuck it out because it wasn't too cold at night, so they just suffered a little bit and made it through. But I will say that when you're packing up your bag and your pack seems to be just a little roomier than it should after you get it all packed up, it probably is. Coming in at number seven is trail runners or boots. I guess that the way this happens is somebody gets in the car and some other more comfortable footwear or sandals, drives to the trailhead and realizes, crap, I forgot the shoes that I need. And a lot of people say that they just trucked on anyway with whatever footwear they had on. Somebody said that they had a friend hiking in slippers. One guy said that his wife's trail name was earned on a trip where she forgot her shoes and that is hard way, I assume because she learned the lesson the hard way. So I would say the best way to prevent this mistake is make sure that you're wearing your footwear to the trailhead. Number eight is toilet paper. And this could be a rough situation, especially depending on what you improvise with. You could use leaves, make sure not to pick up anything that is poison. I've used moss before when I've run out of toilet paper on trail, but some people just use sticks and rocks and then come behind with 
some water squirted on their hand and then they wash their hands with soap and water. I mean, there, there really are some people that that is their method on trail because it's lightweight and they don't have to worry about toilet paper. Or I guess you could always use the dog butt surf method, you know, if you're really in a pinch. Number nine is trekking poles. While this one isn't as much of a necessity, I really feel like awkward if I backpack without trekking poles. And I guess if you have a shelter that sets up using the trekking poles, then that could kind of put you in a predicament if there aren't limbs and such in the area that you're backpacking. And number 10 is battery pack slash charger cord. A lot of people have seemed to find themselves in the situation where they've forgotten their battery bank at home or they have the bank but no way to get the charge from the bank to their phone because they leave the charger cord or some people find that they forget to charge their battery banks. Just some combination of where you end up in a situation where you don't have as much juice to go to your phone and your other electronics as you might think. So according to y'all, those are the top 10 most forgotten backpacking gear items. I think the best way to combat this is of course to make a very detailed gear list so that you're not forgetting anything. You can do this pretty conveniently on several websites. One of the ones I use is ladderpack.com. You could also just make a spreadsheet in Excel or even handwrite your gear list. But if you refuse to do that just because you don't feel like it, then at least go through a mental checklist of your 10 essential items that you should take with you, whether you're going out for an overnight trip or whether you're just going out for a day hike. So if you cover all of your bases with that and you actually look and see that you have everything to make sure that you can survive, then you're probably still gonna have a pretty enjoyable trip. From what I can recall, I haven't really ever left anything at home that I should have taken to the trail with me, but that's because I'm mainly doing through hikes, so I double and triple check before I go that I have everything. But my biggest fault as far as forgetting items is while I'm taking a break on trail. I've left gloves, be it sun gloves or possum down gloves to keep my hands warm. It just seems that I'll take something like that off, leave it on a log, and then not see it when I get up to continue hiking. I've left several hats. As I mentioned before, my tent stakes got left on the Appalachian Trail. And I think my most forgotten item that I always do go back for is my trekking poles. And the way that I make this mistake is I often leave from break while eating a snack or while holding a camera and taking a video and then my hands are occupied. And then when I find myself putting the camera away or I finish my snack and I put my trash away, then I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do with my hands because I've left my trekking poles where I took a break who knows how far back. To combat this forgetfulness, and I still haven't quite mastered it completely, but I always do what I call a dummy check. I pack everything up, I have everything I think on me, and then I turn and scan the area. And I also do this when I pack up in the morning. If you're somebody who tends to forget things on trail like I do, but it's because you pack up in the early morning and it's dark, a tip for you is to put some reflective tape. You could get a hole punch and just make little hole punches on the reflective tape and put that on all of your items if reflective tape will stick to it. And then that way you can kind of scan the ground with your headlamp and if you've forgotten something, hopefully it'll kind of sparkle and shine for you. All right, y'all, well, that is all I have for you today. If you've forgotten an item that wasn't on this top 10 list, feel free to share that in the comments below. And if you wanna make sure that you get to participate in some of these little polls that I do occasionally, make sure you're following me on Instagram and on Facebook. It's at Homemade Wanderlust for Instagram. And then if you go facebook.com slash homemade wanderlust, you'll find me on Facebook. Thanks for watching and we'll see y'all next time.